Desperately Departing by Savage Chapter 4 Morgue Read by Alolo Crap! Anger took over us over anything else that Izuku may have been feeling until when, until his only thought were stings of curse strings of curse words and how he somehow didn't die and was back in this wherever he was. His mind was going a bit too fast for him to properly take in his surroundings, but from what he did get, he was in a grey room that was dimly lit and mostly empty. On the back wall was a long line of square metal lockers. There was nothing on the bland walls except for the metal double doors on other on the other side of the room. He could feel that he was on a cold metal table with some type of cloth or blanket draped over him and the other things in the room with him were a couple of carts with tools and on them a metal double sink on the right side of the room. How could he have been so stupid? Jumping off the school roof was not permanent enough apparently. Izuku thought that it would would have been tall enough that it would immediately take him out but he must have been wrong that could explain why he hurt so bad but if he had survived the fall then why wouldn't then he wouldn't be able to move anything so why didn't he feel like all of his bones were broken a sudden chill crept up Izuku's body and his eyes widened at the realization why did he feel like he was naked Slowly, Izuku moved his right arm, wincing at how stiff and painful the action was, and took a deep breath before lifting the cloth covering him. Maybe it was because he was naked. Why was he naked? And what was that? Izuku examined what he could see of his body and made sure that all of him... Izuku sa- examined what he could see of his body to make sure that all of him was there and he finally noticed his chest. There was a large T-shaped scar going all the way down to his torso that looked freshly healed. Did that mean he didn't have all his organs? He felt fine as far as he knew. Really tired, but what else was new? What organs could you live without? Kidneys? No, you needed your kidneys, but maybe not both of them. What if they took his kidneys? What if they what about his appendix? He was pretty sure that you could do without your appendix. Otherwise people wouldn't get surgery to remove them all the time, right? Mid freak out, Izuku glanced around him and remembered that he was in an unknown place with no clothes on. A new huge scar that had been there for who knows how long. Priorities, he reminded himself. Find some clothes and figure out where the heck you are and then Worry about your appendix. (sighs) Gingerly, he sat up and searched around for anything that he could cover up with. The place looked hospital-esque, so there had to be some scrubs or lab coats somewhere. He didn't see anything that he could use, so that meant it was time for plan B. Izuku carefully carefully slid off the metal table that he had been lying on, his body screaming at him, for the movement and wrapped the cloth that was used to cover to cover him around himself. He secured it so that it, so that it wouldn't fall off easily and moved to find a way out of wherever he was. The double doors were probably his best bet. So peeking sneakily out of one of the doors and seeing that the coast was clear, he tiptoed out of and around the corner. No one seemed to be around, but that didn't mean anything. Izuku still didn't know who he was and what he was doing here, so he needed to keep his guard up. Pe- people began to pop up here and there, walking through the fle- fl- uh, fluorescent halls, chatting with other people or riding on their clipboards. They were all dressed in scrubs, and Izuku felt his stomach drop as his mind wandered to where he could possibly be. Things started adding up until the truth was right in front of his eyes. He couldn't believe it. He didn't want to believe it. How could it possibly happen? It didn't make any sense. Although a lot of things didn't exactly make sense at the moment. 
Shaking, at, shaking the thought away, Izuku carried, in, carried on his attempt to find in clothes and escape. Eventually, he found a door labeled Locker Room, Employers Only. Izuku felt a smile spread across his face. There had to be something he could wear in there. Once he made sure that the coast was clear, he quickly, he quickly got into the room and slipped behind one of the walls just in case someone else was in there. They weren't. Izuku quickly found a pair of black scrubs in a locker that looked roughly his size. Guilt tugged in the back of his mind that was that stealing was wrong, but he had but he had to shove that voice down for the time being. Luckily, he also found a pair of white tennis shoes that was his size and out of the door looking like he and was out of the door looking like he belonged there. Well, as much as a middle schooler could. It didn't take him long after that to find an exit and sneak out of it quickly. As soon as he was out of the large building, Izuku let out the breath he didn't know he had been holding. The fresh air felt good in his lungs and the chill of the night was somewhat comforting. The further he got from the building, the more his thoughts began to pop up and swirl around his head. He couldn't deny what he knew. He had been in a hospital, in an empty room, on a table, naked and with no one around. But he wasn't dead, right? There was no way he was dead. He could feel himself breathing and he could feel the chilling air wrap around his uncovered arms. A dead person wouldn't be able to feel that, right? But then there was... Then what was this... What was... But then what was with that scar in his chest? And his mom? The memory broke through his wall before he could stop it and immediately his eyes began to tear up. He had seen and talked to his mom. That he knew. Now how? That was a whole other issue. And he had jumped off a building. Wouldn't he have like broken limbs or something if he wasn't dead? But he felt completely fine other than the now dull pain slowly fading. He was just really, really tired, but it, and it was beginning to catch up with him now that his adrenaline levels were returning to normal. I... I died. There's no way I didn't, so why am I here? It's not your time yet, sweetheart. You can't be here. You have to go back. His mother's words rang in his ears, and reality set in. Sort of. He had died. But he had come back because it wasn't his time yet, or something. And he was in a morgue because he had been dead, but wasn't anymore? Why wasn't he dead anymore, and without injuries, no less? The only thing to show for it what was he presumed to be an autopsy scar. There were so many things that didn't make sense to him. But one thing that was abundantly clear, he was alive, and he really didn't want to be. As he got farther from the hospital, he began to recognize the area and had confidence in his abilities to make it back to the orphanage. Even though he had only really been there once, Kashan and the other kids would often run him all around the town and he would have to find his way home from anywhere. So he began to study town maps and even some of the towns around as well, just in case, so that he knew where. So that he knew he could. He could get where he needed from pretty much anywhere. He got a few weird looks as he made his way down the street and tried not to think too much about it. They, probably just thought that he looked very young to be a doctor. But he had different problems to deal with. Who had found him? Who knew that he had died? Who knew he had jumped? Did somebody tell the school? What about the orphanage? What if he went back there and his thoughts halted to a stop and he rounded a tall bus just bush just outside the orphanage gate and saw a small group of adults 
huddled clubs close. He strained himself to try and hear what they were talking about, and his heart stops when he finally did. Did you hear about that new boy? How he died? He committed suicide. One of the ladies shushed the other, who had talked very bluntly and looked around. Don't say that too loud. You might get the other kid's ideas. The blunt lady rolled her eyes and a frown deepened on her face. What kind of kid would commit suicide like that anyways? Must have done it for attention. I did hear that his mom just died. Whatever, it's still ridiculous. No kid had any right to kill themselves like that. I mean, what do they even need to be sad about? School? Bedtimes? Like, come on. One of the other ladies scoffed and the blunt lady scowled at her. You have no idea what you're talking about. The lady who had just them earlier placed both placed her hands on both of their shoulders in an attempt to defuse the situation. Listen, it doesn't matter now. Some of the other ladies are already cleaning his room and throwing his stuff in the trash, so we need to figure out who the next one coming is going to be. The group nodded and turned to head inside of the building, and Izuku stood there, hunched against the bush, frozen. He, he didn't have a home anymore. They thought that he died, and they were going to... They were throwing his stuff away! Izuku looked off, took off around the building to where he knew the dumpsters were. He couldn't lose his things. They were some of the only things that he had left of his mom, and he wasn't ready to let her go yet. As he rounded a corner and got to the trash cans, he saw that they had already trashed all of his stuff. It sat loosely on top of some trash bags, thankfully. And lucky for him, there was an empty garbage bag right next to the dumpsters. So he grabbed it and started putting his belongings into it. That way, he could carry it all easily. Okay, he had his stuff. Now it was time to go... Oh, he didn't have a home. Where was he supposed to go? Everyone thought that he was dead, and he couldn't exactly walk up to a stranger and declare his resurrection. They just think that he was crazy and they would probably call the police. And they already knew that he was quirkless, so if he tried to tell them what happened, they would probably think that he was lying and then they would... Deep breaths, Izuku. Deep breaths. He knew that he was beginning to spiral. He wasn't surprised. He had nowhere to go, not a lot of money, and no one who knew that he was alive. He was alone. Again. Izuku's immediate thought was instantly shot down as he remembered what had happened and just and how death had literally rejected him just like everybody else. So what was he supposed to do? He knew what his ultimate goal was. It might take a little bit more time than he was hoping to get there. Until then, he needed some place to sleep. But where could he go? His thoughts no longer... His thoughts longed to go back home, but he didn't exactly know what that was anymore. Maybe his old apartment? People probably had moved in already, but it didn't hurt to check. It would only be for a little while. Just until he could find a loophole in whatever sick game life was playing on him. Luckily, Izuku wasn't one to give up.